It's recording. Gene, this will come out the week after Halloween. Yeah. How was your Halloween? It was not in existence yet. <laughs> yeah. But I do have a question. <laughs> what What are you going to go as? Uh, nothing. What are you we're, we're, we're staying home. <laughs> oh. What? Come on, man. Well, you're not going to be any. You're not going to uh, participate. I'm not, a, I'm not a theater myth major. Uh, all right, fine. <sighs> what are you? What are you going to be? Uh, I'm not dressing up as anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was waiting on you to ask me so much. Oh, man. You tickle Woo. yourself. I do. I, I love that so much. Oh, oh dude, my God. Uh, last episode, we started digging into the history of Engine. Yeah, thanks to Hans Bjordel. Specifically, um, Hans is a great guy. Never met him. Um, no, and he's going to punch you. <laughs> he's a pacifist, but he makes exceptions. Oh, that's the best kind of pacifist. Um, so we covered, like, you know, the start, like wh where you were before mentally, yeah. and the build up. So I want to talk about, like, your experience through running engine. Right. You know, like, there, there's, it, we've been in business probably, I think you've been in business longer than I have for yourself, potentially. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We're not. We're not measuring things here today, but um. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to want to watch the video for this one. Okay, where's the zoom? Uh, but you know, if if uh, if if it's anything like my experience, at the end, it's not the same company as the beginning. Oh no, we and were probably four or five steps in there where you're different companies. I would say there were. I haven't looked at it in a while, but I would say there were six, maybe seven different. Yeah seasons of engine like the different Ooh, flavors right i it was, like it that way that's a good way to put it yeah i mean and i think when you look at these transitions um you don't notice them at first or you fight them but i think you need to kind of just go with it because right your customers are going to show you who they want you to be and i remember this is another thing you know i was mentioning melanie in that earlier episode um, she would say a couple of things that always like I, I'm, to this day, they matter to me. Um, one would be as soon as the client's happy, the work begins because she always wanted things to be better than the client wanted them to be. So if the client approves something should be, okay, we need to work on the way that this looks, this copy could be tightened up a little bit. Hmm. So it'd be like, she would always want to make it better. She didn't ever want to get to this point where it was just like, well, the client's happy. Let's just go. Hmm. So it was always, it was a, there was an internal approval process. They never had to go back through legal or anything like that. But it was the kind of thing that if you were a craftsperson, you were going to see that that detail was put in. If you were just a off the street person, you were going to be like, oh, that's really cool. Right. Because that was how we were going to find new talent. That was how we we're going to, all these people who appreciated the quality we put into the work. Um, so that was that was one of the things that we always were going to take with us, hmm. um, and I've totally forgotten the other one. <laughs> it's it going to come super back though. Important. It was, it dictated I, your life. I dictated my life, and I can't remember now because you're making that <laughs> face. Um, see how I made it your fault? Okay. <clears throat> no, but I'm used to it. Uh, uh, it's totally it's totally killing me now. <laughs> but anyway, so when we first started, um, well, and then it was. It, it, Guy Kawasaki in his book, The Art of the Start, he says, don't write a business plan for the first six months of your company mm -hmm. because you don't know what it is you do. You don't know what it is people are going to pay you for. Absolutely. So if you write this thing and think this is it, you're going to you're gonna lock yourself in mm -hmm. and you may fail, right? For no reason. Um, so anyway, so we start and we are a flash shop, right? Because flash was... The hotness. So what it year was the thing? What year was that? Two thousand and three. Okay, two thousand three. And we are building um, entertainment sites for bars. We're doing trade show uh, animations for big corporate. Um, we we started the very first thing we ever released was our announcement video, announcement flashcard, mm. uh, which 
basically was us in this souped up Mach 1 Mustang. Well, not us, but um, just going down the street, destroying every other car that we saw. <laughs> right? It was just like we were in this race. It was called the race. It was original soundtrack. Uh, it was, we had a, a band that we were really uh, friendly with that got in the studio to record it. It was all original illustration, original writing, everything. Wowie. We put that out there to kind of get excitement and we did. The problem was we couldn't have afforded to hire us to put that card out there. Right. It took us like five weeks. Um, and when you go back and look at everything, <clears throat> there's just, we set this expectation and then we would do these animated cards for every holiday. Mm -hmm. We really got well known for them. Um, but then nobody could afford us. Mm. Right. And so it, it became this thing, even our website, which you look at now, if you could, the Wayback Machine, it's really hard to use. Right. It was really hard to use, but it was super cool. So if you <laughs> wanted, all were in 2003, if you wanted something super cool that was hard to use, right. like we were your guys. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we get to that next season. So we, we basically were organized chaos. Like that was our brand. Like right. from the outside, it looked like we were just rock stars in the design world on the inside. If you ever came in, we were busting butt trying to figure out how to maintain this illusion. Right. Um, and maintain like that, like that duck metaphor where you see the duck just going, but under, under water, it's like, Oh shit. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like, and, and also I would always say we, we, we've got this illusion. We got to work hard to maintain it while we get good enough to actually create everything people think we can do, you know, <laughs> right, right? It's like, and that was the inside was not freaking out, but just like going, it's still working. Mm -hmm. You know, we were so excited and we had this window that uh, there were about 35,000 cars mm -hmm. would go by our office every day. And so we put messages in the window. Right. And this was a big thing that we would do. Like the very first one just said, hello. And it was like a tribute to Apple. Um, when lost was really big, it would be not Penny's boat. <laughs> um, when heroes, it was save the cheerleader, save the world. Like we would just put these things in there. And then one day we put in, um, this window has performed an illegal action. It must be shut down now. <laughs> right. As a joke, a windows joke. Right. And, uh, and the lawyers who worked a couple of blocks down came in and said, what's going on? We'll help you guys. And we, <laughs> yeah, like, we're like, Oh God, no, no, it was, it was Bro, a joke. It's okay. It was a joke. Um, but yeah, but, but so people got to know us from those. <clears throat> and so we, we ended up building this reputation for just being irreverent and having fun and doing all these things. Uh, but we get to this point where um, we needed some support. All of our biz dev was basically stuffing envelopes on a Friday and, and I was a contrarian. So I wanted to find new clients by sending traditional physical mail, mm. just a letter that <laughs> just said, Hey, we do this stuff. This is who we do it for. If you ever need this stuff, call us. Right. And initially it was, we were just looking for companies of a certain size that seemed to go through growth. We'd use the Dun and Bradstreet stuff. Right. And then we would just, we would send out, like we would print out, lick stamp, all that crap, a <laughs> few hundred every Friday and wow. drop them while we're drinking, playing video games. It was a engine Friday started as us doing biz dev. Mm. And then once business just started coming in on its own, it became just a party where everybody would come over to our place on Friday to play rock band and drink and, and do whatever. Um, but then we realized we're priced out of the market. Like once we raised our rates, Jacksonville couldn't afford us. So I looked to see where does Southwest Airlines fly? Because we can afford a round trip on Southwest. So we end up starting to do the same thing, but sending it to people in Miami, in Baltimore, in Chicago. I said, I want us to look like the low cost alternative to their local market, but with mm. the same quality. And we start getting clients. We landed a, a bare pharmaceutical client in Miami. We landed uh, the brick companies, which is a big construct, a big real estate company in Baltimore. Um, we start working mm. with these like really big clients. Mm. And at that time, um, we didn't have interns. We didn't have anything like that. But uh, Travis Schmeiser, who was this, you know, still in college or just out of college guy wanted to be at engine because he heard about how we worked and we were kind of, if you wanted to be an interactive in Jacksonville, we were it. Like they created a new category of the Addy awards, which was interactive. It didn't mm. exist before. And we won best of show broadcast one year, the first year we entered. 
and pissed off all the big agencies. I bet, yeah. They were like, you gave it to those four guys who did something on their lunch hour? That's what somebody actually said. You're like, that shit took us weeks. Yeah, it took a long time. Yeah, but then the next year, the, shit. the next year there was an interactive award. We won it. The next year there was Best Show Interactive. We won it, right? And I said, we'll keep entering this until we don't win Best Show Interactive. And then our job is done because everybody's up their game, right? So we end up going to South by all that kind of stuff. But But the point being... Once we started getting that good, we were priced out of the market. We had to do mm -hmm. stuff. Travis comes in and he had taught himself standards, like web standards. Mm -hmm. And he he shows up and you know, we had a thing where everybody pitch everybody worked design on every event, on every project. So basically we had three designers. We had Varick, we had Travis, and we had Stockton. I was the only non-designer of the four. And they would put together their top two or three ideas for whatever the project was, it would go up on the wall and everybody got three votes of what they thought the best three were. So each each designer would pitch their ideas to the rest of us, the other three, and then whoever won would basically pitch to the client. And that was part of our new biz thing. I would be like, look, everybody here is gonna work on your project. If you go anywhere else, they're gonna slam like right. six folders down on somebody's desk and say, I need this by the end of the week, right? With right. us, people are going to put it up on the wall and mm -hmm. we are going to fight internally over what's the best thing for you. Mm. And then they're going to come off the wall. And anybody who doesn't come off the wall, anybody whose work is still up there, they basically have to clean the place. They have to do all of the other work because they didn't win your project. <laughs> so everybody wants to come off try the wall. really hard. And what would happen is Varick would come off the wall twice. And then Bruce or Stockton would come off the wall. And that's the way it worked. So Travis comes in, he's standards oriented. He's, and he taught himself standards to challenge himself. And he's amazing, right? And so he comes in, we didn't know he was a good designer. He starts beating Varick a couple of times, you know? And it, it's like this thing where you're like going, oh, okay. Well, the kid is hot tonight, right? And so, so Travis comes on board. We had another rule that if anybody was with the company, I, I talked about rules in that first episode. Um, if anybody was with the company for two years, they either get offered ownership or they're fired. <laughs> Once you hit two years, because if, and this gets to the, kind of that thing Melanie had about always making things better. I took that to the team as well. It's like, if somebody has been with you for two years and they're fine and it's working and whatever, well, if they're not moving up enough that you would after two years say this person deserves more. And we all know it's hard for the upward mobility then maybe they aren't the right person, right? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, Travis was definitely somebody who, who deserved that more, right? But we started rebuilding. So this goes to that second phase of who Engine was. We were a standard shop. Well, well don't, don't go over that too quick because that's a yeah. big jump. I mean, how does that work from... I started my company like right there, right? I, I yeah. worked in the industry, all the flash and shit, and then, you know... It's like standards yeah. and stuff. That's kind of what our entry. How does that culturally work going from a flash shop to a standard shop? Because that's night and day when it comes to web design. Oh, yeah. Like how, did Varric, how did Varric do? I mean, you got Travis introducing this stuff. And that's a different design uh, aesthetic too, you know? Yeah. No. So, I mean, Varric was great. It didn't matter the medium. Well, he's just it, he's just dripping talent, man. He is. It, I mean, it, we did an event in Jacksonville, rude. and the dude sat uh, stage left and just did a live drawing of the yeah. the dude the live or whoever, sketch. Well, whoever was giving the talk, he sketched them and their ideas like live. Yeah. It was amazing, and he used to do that at South by when he, they would put a huge canvas in front of the stage, and Gary V would be talking, and there's Varick like, in a beanie and barefoot, like yeah. going crazy, getting after it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a great, great question. I think maybe we still had some flash shot, flash sites. We probably still did some of our own cards, but for the right. most part, we It doesn't went, happen overnight unless you're some kind of hardcore well, standard. That's true. Freak. But one thing we did was we found our five, five clients we built flash sites for who were probably suffering as a result because yeah. of the inability for search to find them. Right, 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 right. So one was a, a company, for example, called Villa Vita, which was an Italian furniture store. Um, a one-off, not a not a chain. And this woman would go to Italy where her family was from and find the most amazing furniture and bring it back. And then, you know, obviously she had put a lot of work into it. It was crazy expensive. 
And so we built a flash site to promote it. Mm -hmm. Well, we contacted her and we said, hey, the web's changing. What we built for you doesn't work. Um, right. We want to rebuild it at no cost. Mm -hmm. Because as we change, we also need a portfolio of this work to show people that we know what we're doing. And, and told her, you know, for the first time, uh, for us, we understand the way we build as is, is more important than what actually gets shown um, in order to get people to you. Mm -hmm. Now, once, once they get there, obviously the way it looks, the way it feels, all that right. stuff. So I started reading Jacob Nielsen. I start reading, I'd already read Steve Krug when I was back or Krug when I was back at, uh, at the agency. But so we start really focusing on usability and standards. So start as a flash shop, get a lot of notoriety, now rip the Band-Aid off and we're going to be a standard shop. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, uh, we had decided that the Addy Awards weren't a thing for us anymore. So we find South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. we, were, I, we were like, there's got to be a place. So we actually took the money we would have put into the Addy Awards, which was always around 15 grand. Yeah. Because I always told, I say, you enter, the, you enter the categories nobody's in, you win those, right? And then you also make sure that you spend enough money that they want you to come back. Because those are the things that tip it. If you're in award shows, I'm sorry, but this is the way that a lot of that stuff works. And mm -hmm. we deserved what we won. We deserved when we lost. But it does give you that little push. Mm -hmm. You know, the more you spend, they want you to come back. Um, so we took that money and Bruce and I went off to How to see what How Design was. And Varric and Travis went off to South By. So this is another part of that second season where now Travis and Varric are contacting us saying, we're we're shooting pool with Molly Holschwag. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, we just, we just met Jeffrey Zellman. Now these are people whose books are on our bookshelf. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Bruce and I are at Howe and we're hanging out with Kelly Goto and Dave Fletcher from the mechanism and other people, but these were already friends. So we're hanging out with friends. We're not meeting new people. Um, and I don't think it was us. I mean, we were definitely, I mean, Bruce is a little more introverted, but we were definitely out there meeting people and stuff. They, they were just print people. Mm -hmm. They weren't, they weren't really interactive, whereas South By had the interactive track. And so we were like, okay, South By is our jam. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Um, we need something else. And then Travis actually came up with the idea. Well, the idea, I guess, was a collective. But Travis didn't want to do the window anymore because, well, one time he did actually have to go to the hospital because with a exacto blade, he sliced himself, uh, his finger while he was putting this stuff up. And I'm like, we don't have insurance. What's happening? I didn't say, Travis, are you okay? I said, we don't have insurance. Um, we took him to the hospital. He's fine. But, uh, but then, um, I had been at, in Vegas for an event. I was speak, I was starting to speak more and came back with all those pissy bunny magnets. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it was a cute little bunny and the saying would be like, you're ugly. And that makes me sad. You know, it's like things like right. that. And then, um, we started looking at the bookshelf to see who the people were. We started looking at the pissy bunny things and we came up with this idea of happy webbies. Well, where, well, I want to hear about the happy webbies, but I, I want to make sure we cover some of this because I don't want to do the same thing where we just assume everybody knows knows things. But like, <laughs> thanks. Let, let, let's talk about that little bit because uh, we forget how uh, kind of violent it was where we went from flash to no flash. I mean, like like Apple was like, nope, and they turned that shit off in Safari. Like, you know, Macromedia flipped. You know, I mean, that stuff kind of happened really. Yeah, fast. it was like within under a year, you had to like. Well sort of go, oh, shit, what are web standards? And when it, it exploded. You go back to the mid-90s and AuthorWare was Macromedia's big product, right? I don't mm -hmm. know the exact years. Um, and then AuthorWare still exists, but kind of becomes director. Yeah. So now you've got database-driven design. You've got we're, all these things. Like, do we make CDs? Like, what the it's hell kind do we of, make? Yeah. Here? Imagine Squarespace, but for software development. Right. Because that's kind of what director was. Like, oh, I can do all these things. And... Mm -hmm. I can make an online catalog, but it's on a, it's on a disc. It's not online. Right. Um, and then Adobe acquires Macromedia right now. It's Adobe mm -hmm. flash. I went on the, uh, I went talking at Adobe flash, which was a conference, right? Because we mm -hmm. were flash people and all this stuff. But, um, but yes. Yeah, so then that becomes a thing where, because Google has overtaken Alta Vista. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, and so now Flash is seen as the worst possible thing you could do. It is seen almost mm -hmm. as a, uh, a side gig. It might mm -hmm. be fine for bands or it might be fine for a bar. I mean, like literally within months, it was like, you're not a legitimate web developer. Yeah. 
if you're building flash stuff which like, I, it, it was sort of like you're you're from from the marketing shop world like yeah. they don't dig you anymore and add add this to it and I'm, I'm sure somebody listening can correct me if i've got the timing off a little bit but at the same time adobe releases a new version of flash oh and yeah they changed a ton of stuff yeah, yeah. the whole all the scripting was different you're yeah like, the Whoa. scripting was different the timeline was different the way that objects interacted mm -hmm. with each other was different and i wasn't a, a flash person but I, I listened to mm -hmm. it i heard what was going on so at the same time the world is saying we don't like it it's saying and we're going to make it different and so a lot maybe yeah. a lot of people took that job without travis we don't make that change right okay because and that's he was it's because it, at that point in time it comes down to individuals inside your organization yeah to make that shit happen that's right uh, and, and it comes down to individuals not only making that shit happen, but being smart enough to sort of read the tea leaves before that stuff starts going down. Well, and he was, Travis was the one um, who was reading all the blogs, who right. was doing all that stuff, who knew all that stuff. God, remember and so, when we used to keep blogs about stuff and yeah. shared information? We, you know, <laughs> it was it was one of those things. Bloggers became uh, speakers, became podcasters, became all the things. And they're all, all still out guys, there. All those guys, like Snook. Yeah, yeah, and, I saw the, Snook two weeks ago. Yeah, and the and the ladies too who who created, literally created the stuff we're we're relying on now. Yeah, now amazing. Yeah. You I go just want to make sure we stuff. touched on that because yeah, I know there are people that are they're starting their companies now in the past couple of years that did not they weren't around doing work during that time. No, and it's well, hard and, to understand. And animation got labeled as the bad thing when right. reality HTML five comes along. Uh, animation. Yeah, and you're like going, oh, so animation's not the bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Because usability world, it was like, well, if this is moving over here, it's distracting me from accomplishing my goal. Mm -hmm. So now animation's back, but it's not always the best, right? I think I think both sides were kind of right on that. Yep. So and just so you know, folks, that's not the last time this shit happened in change. <laughs> uh -uh. We'll get into that. We're always like, right, so. uh, and we were always like, you know what? There's going to be another wave. Let's just make sure we catch the next wave. Mm -hmm. You know, is it mobile first? Is it uh, content is king? Is it, you know, whatever might be, there's always something new that's mm -hmm. going to be happening. Uh, we just, at, at one of our events, we had a uh, biz dev first. A BD, <laughs> BDF is a, a BFG. You gotta, BDA <laughs> is a BFG. You're creating BDF things, man. BFG. I know, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, so then we go into standards. At the same time, we have that incident with the window. I had come back from Vegas with those uh, bunny things, uh, mm -hmm. the, the pissy bunnies. Varric starts doing things just of us. So like he had one of my wife, Kat, and it said, did you hear what happened on Lost last night? Cause okay. she was way into loss. We all were. Um, there was, there was one with Travis and it said something like grids are good. Right. And so it was just these little things. And then right. um, we were sitting around on Monday. We always had a Monday meeting where it was basically the commitment meeting. We would put everything that needed to happen out on the table and people would say, well, I can take care of that. Okay. Well, I'll take care of that. So everybody was like grabbing whatever they were going to manage. And we started talking about the window. And then we started talking about the different things. And somehow I still don't know the origin. Um, I, I'll have to go back and look. I know it wasn't me, but it was one of the other guys. And uh, we came up with this idea, Happy Webbies. And we said, hey, why don't we create something of Jeffrey Zeldman? Why don't we create something of Kelly Goto? Why don't we create something of these people who influenced us and see if they notice, <laughs> right? right? And so we create it and we put it out there and um, Andy Budd was one of the early ones, uh, you know, um, Jeremy Keith. Uh, we had we had a Brit pack, right? <laughs> yeah. We had, uh, but yeah, so we, we go out there and we do it. We had a, a, a Jacob Nielsen one, which said your site's not usable and that pisses me off or something, right? <laughs> Whatever, I can't remember them. But, um, but yeah, so it was one of these things that we do and suddenly we're in the cool kids club. Mm -hmm. Like we, and that was another one of those where it's like, we really need to get good at this stuff fast because yeah. somebody's going to yeah. realize the human has all. no clothes, right? <laughs> but yeah, so so we create that marketing campaign for us. And so that's the where, other thing. Where were you at then with employees? Like how many employees? Still just the, just it was so five far. of us. Make well, no. important. Five or six. At that time it was four. Okay. Um, we lost somebody due to the three strike rule. Okay. okay. Um, and that's, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, so at that time, 
um, Travis had joined and, and didn't take that spot. We just changed. Also not being a flash shop. It was uh, having a, hard a, a hardcore flash person. Mm. Um, but but it was it was the rules that, that have. I don't want to talk about it because he's a friend and it's like, I don't want to go there. Sure. But um, yeah, and I just talked into my car. Okay, we get it. Um, but you have a good but yeah, so then we become um, we became a standard shop. Mm -hmm. and uh that was a big deal so i would say that was kind of our deal. second season was being the standard shop um we also accessibility was a huge thing for us uh 508 compliance well, which I, isn't really compliance i think it's but. important to point out at that time like you had you saying it's a second season but it was legitimately a second season for the industry too yeah. because that earlier flash environment was primarily uh, uh, agencies, right? And that's a competitive environment versus the web standards environment, which the people working in the web standards environment were not so competitive. Um, no, they were collaborative. We, a lot more collaborative. We wrote blog posts. We gave shit away for free. Yep. Um, we would meet in person and share stories and drink beer together and become yeah. friends. And you'd be friends with somebody across, you know, working in England doing yeah. some cool shit and you, you'd be over here wherever you were and you'd be talking and it was you know, a cool that, time. That's such a huge thing to mention, Gene, because I remember working at the advertising agency. I would know people at other agencies because mm -hmm. I would meet them or they may have come through, but we never talked about what was going on. Much less sharing. It Literally was a bubble. Code. It was almost like you had to, you had to clock out all knowledge of what was working right. Right. when you left. Whereas, and I remember when I, we first started engine, I heard from some people at other shops that were just like, welcome to the outside. Mm -hmm. um, but then you're right. We start talking with people. I remember when Andy Bud called the office mm -hmm. and this was a big deal. I mean, mm -hmm. we were again, Oh yeah. Four guys in Jacksonville, just trying to figure out the best way to build stuff. And we get this call and, um, I can't remember. I can't remember what his was, but it did have the word wankers in it. Uh, and so it was like, I'm sure it did. It, it was something like <laughs> your, your codes wrong. You wankers or something. Yeah, right? yeah, it was like, yeah. it was something like that. But that and, was um, the thing. We, we, it was the craft. It was this communal yeah. uh, industry wide care of making sure it was right. And we yeah. were going to put it down in the books as this is the right way. You need to be able to eat off the code. Right. Like yeah, that was yeah. kind of thing. But Andy called because he didn't want the word wankers in his happy webby because he said, I, I got a kid. I got, you know. Um, and so it was like, OK. And then I realized I was like, this thing really matters to people. Yeah. And then we started asking people started asking. That way. But the next time we go to South by, we take T-shirts mm. of the happy webbies to give away, to just give away. And right. then suddenly we see people wearing our stuff. And I mean, it was crazy. But to your point, that restricted to collaborative move that was everything to me to be able to suddenly be a part of a bigger community that we had never had before i mean we started building that in jacks with engine fridays where people from competitive shops agencies or web oriented would come over and just hang out um, which also was great for biz dev mm -hmm. um, all those things but but yes yeah, so that second season we were really standards I mean, that was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great time. It was a great time. And that's kind of not long after that's when I met you, but like, yeah. it's a great time in the industry for me too, just to, to think back of the collaborative nature of it. And, and it, we're getting away from that now. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you're doing some great things with the Bureau from a, from Thanks. a, from a agent. I, I don't even want to use the term agency because I'm, I'm too triggered from the past, but like we are, this, we are <laughs> this firm, this group of individuals building things on the web. It's a, it's a great thing you're doing because you're, yeah. you're from this time and you're trying to, you're bringing it to everybody. Me, I can't, I'm a time traveler from the past. Yeah. A little bit. I come um, to you to build this community, but it's a good <laughs> thing. And a lot of people don't know it because they didn't experience it. Um, and it was, it was beautiful. I would say it's sort of like the Renaissance. Of the, yeah. of the web in a, in lot, a lot of ways. ways predates the iphone and uh yeah you know that's some that's some really good work. Well, and that that becomes the next phase and i know that we're we're coming up on time here but yeah that move to mobile when like mobile becomes a thing oh my god yeah that changed so let's, it again let's uh let's do that we're in another 30 minutes here so let's do that i want to make sure we get 
all these details because I, I think there's some really good stuff here. Um, yeah. we're, we're not like pointing it out like so obviously, but, <laughs> but spend some time on these because there's some really good stuff here in terms of Thanks, um, learning from yourself and, and building. Because it's like we said, the other one, if you've been yeah. doing this for any amount of time, you are not the same person. You're not the same company that you are now than when you started it. Um, yeah. It's like a marriage, man. You're not the same people five years later. And you got to you got to be able to change. I couldn't agree more. And I'm, I'm going to leave a hot take for this one. Boom. Um, you know what? As we talk about these different seasons, which there were six or seven uh, with Engine, um, don't ever fall in love with what it is you're doing right now. Like love it mm -hmm. and enjoy it when you're in the moment. But don't do it to a point where you're resisting other things that are happening, where change is happening. And I'll tell you the, the perfect example of the way the web develops. In the late 90s, if you didn't put click here, people didn't know they could. <laughs> yeah. In the mid 2000s, if you put click here, it was bad because screen readers were going right. to get not be able to communicate to their people what they were going to see. So there's this evolution that's going to happen mm -hmm. and it's really exciting to ride the wave. So don't just lock in on one thing. If mm -hmm. you want to be at the forefront of the web. That's key. All right, man. Woo. Bye Later. Gene.